all the holidays are upon us between Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those office parties and everything else. It's a great time of year, but what you really need to be aware of is how much you're drinking and should you be driving. A lot of times we think, oh, we're okay, and then if you get stopped, you get in trouble. And that's why Tony DeFazio is here from DeFazio and Zyden, and he's here to talk about DWIs and all that's uh, involved in that. And let's start with, uh, you're at a party, you have a drink or two, you think you're okay, and all of a sudden you're over the limit, just over the limit. What happens in all those situations? Well, there's four main uh, charges for DWI in New York State. And you forget about the uh, terms DWI, DUI, those are misnomers. You want to focus on what the actual charge is. The lowest level offense is called driving while ability impaired by alcohol. And what that means is that you're basically just over the legal limit, um, which is .05 in New York. Um, the, there are serious consequences of getting a charge like this, so it's, even though it's not considered a misdemeanor. So it's considered a traffic infraction, just like speeding, but the consequences are much more serious. You're going to look at a 90-day suspension of your license. You may or may not be able to drive during that period on a conditional license. You're going to have to pay fines. Your insurance is going to go up. You're going to have to hire a lawyer. It's going to be a big hassle. And that's kind of the point. They want to take people who are maybe not too drunk, maybe just a little over the line, but they want to give them the message you are not to get involved in this. If you drink and drive, you're going to have problems. Um, but then it kind of goes up from there, because then your main charge in New York is driving while intoxicated. And this is like for a first-time offender who's got no prior misdemeanor convictions. And that means your, your blood alcohol level, as um, determined by your blood, either through a breath test or through a blood test, uh, is going to be over 0 .08, 0 .08 in volume. Everybody kind of knows that number. Um, if it's over that amount, or even if they don't have that, but they can prove that you were impaired, that you were intoxicated through other means, through um, the way you were walking, your inability to do certain field tests, or just the fact that you basically couldn't uh, speak the word or give a good sentence, then they can use that against you. If you're convicted of that, it's a misdemeanor. Now it's a criminal offense. You have to put that down on any type of application. It also has a longer suspension period, depending on your time. It also has much heavier fines, and it's going to cost you more money with your insurance and with other state DMV fees. Now, a few years ago, they added an additional charge on top of that because they wanted to say, look, if you are charged with uh, having a blood alcohol level above 0.18, which is much higher than uh, the, the, uh, the legal limit, and it shows that you are in a significantly intoxicated position, uh, condition, excuse me, and in that situation, they almost double and triple the fines, and they triple the uh, double the extension periods, and it's just very uh, expensive, and it costs you a lot of money. You know, the final charge really uh, that deals with uh, DWI driving while intoxicated has is is kind of coming into its own now, because of the use of uh, medications, and that's driving while impaired by drugs. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. And the reason that this is important, and the reason most people don't understand this, is because you may be driving around right now with a substance which is not necessarily a controlled substance, but it is a substance that is listed in the health law and is determined that if you are caught driving with this substance in your system and you are found to, to have, been, you're going to be considered impaired by this drug and you can be prosecuted for that. So a lot of people don't know that. It's not just like oxycodone or these controlled substances or illegal drugs like heroin, cocaine, or even marijuana. Uh, it's now some, con some controlled substances that you may be getting as your regular medication, certain blood pressure medications, certain other types of medications. People need to be aware of this because you could wind up getting a criminal conviction, a misdemeanor, where you will not be able to drive and have to pay all these fines. And just because you were taking medication, you didn't know there was anything wrong with it. So let's say uh, I get a couple of teeth pulled. A uh, doctor gives me a prescription, says, hey, don't drive. And I think, well, you know what, I'm only going to the store and I get stopped, how do they know that I took um, whatever drug it is? I know how they can do a test for alcohol, but how do they do a test for? Well, they have these things called now drug recognition experts, and you started to see it about seven or eight years ago. So these are officers that have been trained to basically sit down with you after you've been arrested and ask you a series of questions and do a series of tests above the field sobriety test. And they can make determinations that you are under the influence of certain medications. The other thing is a lot of people carry their own medications with them. So when they search your car and they, and they find the pill bottle that says oxycodone in it, and then they ask you, did you take any medication? You say yes. Well, there you go. They have the case right there. 
But in those cases, they do have to show you were actually impaired. So it's not enough that they pull you over for a broken taillight, or it's not enough that you broke you over for even speeding. They have to show that you were swerving, that you got into an accident, that something else was wrong. So, but, in, but you still need to be careful about those things. If you get a medication that says don't drive, they mean it. And if you have other medications that may affect you, you need to, you need to do the research because if you're out of a license for a year yeah. because of this, up here, that's gonna seriously affect your life. It, it certainly will. Well, good stuff to know, and uh, that's always great information because that is your right to know. Tony DeFazio of DeFazio and Zyden, and thanks for watching this edition of Your Right to Know. We'll see you next week.